All right, today I'm going to be doing the very first episode of DOS Vlog, which is a combination of DOS and Vlog. So, DOS Vlog. Anyways, today I'm going to be playing Commander Keen episode 1 for the umpteenth billionth time. I mean, I already did a stream, and I already did a, uh, well, I did stream of this game twice, and this is my very first review. But before I begin, I'm going to turn off the sound because the PC speaker sound is super annoying. So let's begin. Anyways, the purpose of this is to uh, not so much me beat the game or me provide a review because I already did that, but to show or to share with you guys my experiences and uh, recollect on my past about this game. And as you can see, and, from what I can tell, this was my very first DOS game. Now, where I played this for the first time, I do not remember. Yeah, like I previously stated, I turned off the sound for the game because this game relies on internal PC speaker. Of course, I find it kind of hard to believe that this game's already been out for 30 years. I mean, if I remember correctly, I think I was six or something when I first played this, and I was instantly hooked. As you can see, I can easily whip through this game at about between 20 and 30 minutes. Of course, DOS Vlog episodes are only going to be about half an hour long, or until you beat the game, whichever happens first. Of course, just like in all the other Commander Keen episode games, there are going to be levels along the way where it just pretty much diverts your attention from your objective. And this one says, It is too bad that you cannot read the standard galactic alphabet, human. And then Commander Keen's he's like, Do I really want to read the standard galactic alphabet? Although, honestly, there, although, honestly, it probably wouldn't hurt, but uh, what would be its purpose? Okay, like right here is a good example. Okay, there's one word for you. You learn how to... You already know the word for Pogo in the standard galactic alphabet. <laughs> Whoa! That was a close one. Yeah, one thing I really love about... At least the first three Commander King games is how, uh, how tight the controls are. I just have to big guy and get myself a teddy bear. Of course, you could beat the game without the pogo, but boy, is it going to be a lot more difficult. I just love how those little green guys just commit suicide. Oh, I love this Commander Keen! Ah! Of course, you can smash on their heads. It's kind of surprising that you can smash on their heads and yet they don't die. I mean... I mean, what, is their head like some sort of like spongy material or something? Ah, uh, well, that's probably a topic best not... That's probably a topic best not discovered. Anyways... You know, I've always wondered what those little uh, purple plants do all day. I mean, they just sit there just yapping away like... Yap, 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 yap. Oh, one thing I did mention in my review is that uh, how Commander King can manage to eat all this junk food and either not get diabetes or manage to keep his weight intact. And I also did mention in my review is how he's able to roam around the surface of Mars without uh, suffocation. I mean, I gotta be honest. I think Commander King's probably a lot tougher than Doom Guy to all you Doom fans out there. I mean, he's just a kid wearing a football helmet, walking the surfaces of Mars, and not suffering for it. Whereas Doom Guy is well trained, well equipped, and yet he has to wear equipment. I mean, 
Well, I'm not gonna go into that. I don't wanna spend time thinking about something that makes absolutely no sense. Oh, that's right, I forgot to mention one thing, is that uh, this game is pretty... Whoops. As I was saying, this game is pretty stingy with ammo, so... <sighs> Jesus Christ, not again. <sighs> Stupid little green little... Well, anyways, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted... This game is extremely stingy with ammo, which means you can't just go around collecting ammo and just lay waste to all the aliens on Mars. That's Doomed Guy's job. And that would be a career infringement. I mean, Command King just wants to grab the parts and get off Mars. I think later on in the level, or later on in the game, excuse me, that there's a level you can get where it has like, like about eight or so teddy bears and you can uh, get extra lives there. I do know later you can get extra ammo, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Whoops. No, oh, that's all right. I wanted to do that anyways. But anyways, going back to what I was saying, I always had a, Commander Keen's always had a place in my heart, you know? I mean, I don't know if it's just because of its charm or if it's simple gameplay, but this is one of those games that just holds near and dear to me uh, throughout my whole life. And like I said, it's hard to believe that this game is already 30 years old. Well, I shouldn't say game, I should say the series. Franchise, rather, excuse me. And I'm well aware that there is already another Commander King game made by Bethesda, but that has no relation to this. I mean, not that I object to trying something new. It's just that if you do try to... Let me rephrase. Let me try that again. If you try to do take something old and try to make it new and it turns out wrong, you just wasted your efforts. But if you take something old like this, try to rework it and it does right, well, then kudos. All right, now we got it right. And there's the main antagonist, the Vorticons. Or actually, one of them. Of course, in episodes 2 and 3, you're going to be facing a whole lot more. Yeah. Gotcha. But you know, now that I think about it here, it makes me wonder, what were they doing with the parts in the first place? I mean, what was the Vorticon trying to do? Sell it on the black market on Mars? I mean, if there really was a black market on Mars, I'd be pretty impressed. Yeah, like, uh, even if there was currency on Mars, what would they use? Well, anyways, that's neither here nor there. Let's just, uh, focus on Commander Keen and my, and my experiences with this game. Yeah, going back to what I said about, uh, uh career, career infringement, it would be kind of funny to see a Doom guy in this game just blasting all the aliens. I mean... I'd pay top dollar to see that. But, I don't know, uh... I don't know. I mean... It would just look too weird. It also would look out of place. It's like how this guy just goes... I've got nothing better to do than just walking around aimlessly, tearing my teeth... Don't know what for. 
Am I even getting paid for this? Yeah, that is that is a little strange as to why why, is, why those green guys are just walking around back and forth. Come to think of it, did the Vorticons just say, okay, as soon as, okay, we're gonna go hide the parts here. If some little kid here wearing a green football helmet walks around, just walk around aimlessly chattering our teeth. I mean, what's the motivation? Well, that's open for interpretation. You just have to use your you just have to use your imagination, I guess. I'm not gonna go for those books. Yeah, this is something uh, I'm probably sure a lot of us already know about, but getting there is a lot easier than it looks. Now, of course, I'll show you that and show you that in just a little bit. Oop, I just shot a little dude. Oh well. Dang it. Yeah, and unfortunately, unlike the rest of the uh, uh, levels in this game, this one makes you complete. This game forces you to complete the level, otherwise, you can't move on. Now that I think of, also think about it, I feel kind of sorry for shooting that little dude. I mean, he was just. I was just innocently walking around. But then again, he got in my way, so. There you go. All right, we're not gonna make the same mistake twice. No! Oh, yay, yay. All right. Well, that was obviously a uh, Exploitable. One thing I definitely remember about this level is that there's two ways you could take it. You could take the easy, less profitable way, or, as I'm going to show you here, I'm going to take the harder, but, oh yeah, the ice cannons, as I was saying, the harder, but, sli whoops, slightly more profitable way. Oh, the irony of that image just baffles me. I mean, he's on the surface of Mars, and it's apparently, from what I understand, if I remember correctly, much colder on Mars than it is on Earth. And yet, Commander Keen's not suffering from hypothermia. As you can see, this area is a little bit more profitable because you can collect soda cans along the way. those little robot dudes as well. There you go. Takes care of that. Now this is the level where you can actually stockpile on ammo. I mean, honestly, I don't mind there being levels where you can get take the opportunity to uh, restock or replenish your ammo. I just don't like the idea of being it too exploitable. I mean, you can just go in one room, re replenish ammo, and then leave, come back, restock, and repeat the loop again and again and again and again. 
I mean, you don't want to make the game too easy, but then again, you don't want to make the game next to impossible. I say next to impossible because I don't firmly believe in possible. I believe anything is possible, but you just got to put your mind to it. I mean, does it give you advantage? Sure. But... No, I'm not going to bore you with too much details as to why I think that. That's just my opinion. That's my take on it. All right. Yeah, I remember this being extremely difficult. And if you don't time it just right, you're not... Oh, there we go. Got it. Thank you. And there we go. Now we're on the dark side of Mars. And this is the level that has those umpteen teddy bears. <laughs> Later, dude. Oh, there goes Commander Keen shooting those little green dudes again. That's the end of the level. Huh. You know, if you plan on doing a secret level like this, it really got to make a lasting impression. And unfortunately, that level really didn't. I mean, that's not to say that the, uh, that's not to say that all secret levels are like that. It's just that some are like that. Like you make, like you put in the effort to, hold on, there we go. As I was saying, if you plan on making a secret level in, this game or any game, you gotta make sure it makes a lasting impression. Because, I mean, if you just make a secret level only for it to be like two or three minutes long here, that's not very impressive. And I've played plenty of games where there are secret levels strewn about that made a much, much bigger impression. Oh yeah, that's another thing I didn't mention is that uh, who built those robots and sent them to Mars? Was it was it those green alien dudes? I mean, if they managed to somehow construct those robots without arms, I'd be very impressed. Or maybe it's the Vorticon dude who brought them with them. It's like like it's a passenger, like it's passengers in front of their ships. Like, okay, robot dudes, you can tag along here, but we're listening to the music I want to listen to. That's just my guess. And there's also these guys too, uh, I mean... They're just aimlessly wandering around. But nothing better to do with their time on their hands. And of course I know how to beat this guy. And I still find this kind of funny. 
he probably got squished under that rift probably because he drank all that, uh, from what I understand, the game manual, mouthwash. Well, and I think I know what it is, either. I think it's moonshine. Or bootleg liquor. Well, anyways. Takes care of that. And now we get the, uh, and we all get the, uh, ending of he returns to being with bacon mega rock and quickly replaces the missing parts without tools mind you he must get home before his parents do real question is what were his parents doing anyways i mean well it's probably best it's probably best not to figure that out That would have been funny if he had that Metal Gear Solid sound effect, you know, like that, meh, sound where he gets spotted. So he makes it home and rushes it to beat his parents upstairs. Commander King must be one impressive athlete to perform that kind of feat. And of course, here comes the obligatory, uh, shh, honey, let's see if little Billy is asleep. I mean, it's not like we were away or anything. Billy, I, I love the part where she completely freaks out. And like, what is this funny great thing in your room? Ah, oh, Mom, can't I keep him? How cliche. Well, we'll talk about that in the morning, son. You get some rest. Ay, ay, ay. You know, one thing that really bugged me is, uh, why didn't his parents call, like, Area 51 or the Pentagon or whatever? I mean, that kind of attention is not going to go unnoticed for long. But of course, that's the obligatory. There's no sleep for Commander Keen. And the Mordecai Mothership looms above, ready to destroy Earth. I find it kind of strange that uh, nobody else is aware of uh, such a thing. Only he, Commander Keen does. And of course, the obligatory to be continued. How lovely. Now, it was not uncommon for games, that, especially if you had shareware, to have this sort of screen show up after you beat the uh, game. Of course, back then, we didn't have internet, so this was the only way to send for the last two episodes. We actually had to mail them a, it's either a yeah, check or money order to this address, which, I don't, which is no longer in service. And please include $2 for shipping and handling. And of course, I also like the, uh, at the very bottom, it says, the end for now. Of course, it's having the obligatory meh. Well, anyways, um, that is episode one of DOS Vlog. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for listening, and I will see everyone next time.